Miss Craig. Well, Mr. Hey, let me help you with that. Oh, I can make it. Yeah, my pleasure, Mrs. Craig. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Glad to be of any assistance. Oh, apples. Oh, yeah. Well, it's good. You know the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. What do you use to keep policemen away? <laughs> This is station WNAC. When you hear the gong, the time will be exactly 10 seconds to 7 o'clock. The Battle of Brains is on the air. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Don Wilson. Tonight, Tom Taylor Cigars bring you that popular quiz contest, The Battle of Brains. As you know, each week we try to bring you the most interesting and capable teams to compete in this spontaneous and unrehearsed contest. This evening, all the questions I ask will be regarding crimes and criminals. And I'm extremely proud to announce a real battle is in the offing. For our contestants will be famous city police detectives versus celebrated detective fiction writers. First, allow me to introduce the captains of the respective teams. For the detectives, Inspector Joseph Clinton. And for the detective fiction writers, Mr. Barry Craig. What a ham. Incidentally, Mr. Craig has quite a reputation of being an amateur detective. And by the way, Mr. Craig, you know Inspector Clinton, don't you? Oh, yes. On several occasions when I've been engaged in a little amateur sleuthing, I've bumped into the inspector. Oh, then you're all rivals, eh? Quite the contrary. On the several occasions Mr. Craig has bumped into me, as he so aptly puts it, I found him to be an exceptional and capable detective. <clears throat> Fiction writer. <laughs> Are the judges ready? Yes, sir. All right, Inspector. It's your first question. What is a panopticon? What is a panopticon? A panopticon is a circular prison in which the cells and their occupants are visible from a central tower. Correct, Mr. <laughs> now, Mr. Craig, your first question. What prison has an Indian name meaning stony place? Would you mind repeating that question, please? What prison has an Indian name meaning stony place? Sing Sing. Sing Sing. Sing Sing, you dope. No coaching, please. Sing Sing. Sing Sing. Correct. I don't know what you do about me. Now, Detective Gatling, here's your question. Mr. Gatling, who invented the machine gun? Who invented a machine gun? Why, that was, uh, uh, who invented a machine gun? No, that as well as a little old name, man. Uh, uh, would you mind repeating the question, please? Who invented the machine gun, Mr. Gatling? I know that as well as I know my own name. Uh, who invented the machine gun? Yes, Mr. Gatling. Who invented the machine gun? Why, that was the... Uh, um... Sorry, Detective Gatling. Time's up. That eliminates you. Who invented the machine gun? I know that as well as I know my own name. What is your own name? Gatling. That's right, Mr. Gatling. The machine gun was invented by another Gatling. But you're too late. <laughs> Now, our next contestant, author of over a hundred mystery novels, Rufus Scott, needs no introduction. James! Oh, Julie, you nearly scared me out of my skin. Where's Barry? What's the matter, darling? I've got to see Barry right away. Where is he? He's on the radio. It's a quiz contest. Oh, when will he be home? Oh, as soon as the program's over, I guess. What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Where's the matter? Someone was going to commit murder in the dark room. Chloroform. He flashed a light in my face. Hey, I, wait I... a minute. You sit down and get what your breath. You're a little hysterical. Uh, get you some sherry. 
I don't want any sherry. Oh, I suppose it'll take Barry ages to get home. Forget Barry for a minute and take it easy. Here, it's good for what ails you. Now, look, will you stop the double talk and speak slowly and tell me what happened? Well, nothing has happened yet. That is nothing serious. But there's going to be a murder unless we stop it. Who's going to murder who? I don't know, Jane. I don't know. But whoever was with me in that dark room this afternoon was there to kill. He had a handkerchief in his hand. It reeked of chloroform. And then he put a flashlight on my face and I screamed. And then all of a sudden I heard the door to the dark room open and close. Evidently whoever was there was after somebody else because when he put the light in my face, why I... Whoa, now wait a minute. Come on over and sit down, hon. Try to unlax. I'm sorry to prattle on like an idiot, I know, but... but you're excited, sure. Look, Julie, you, you keep talking about all this happening in a dark room. What, what do you mean, dark room? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you knew. For the past three months, I've been working for the McCormick Commercial Photography Studio. Oh, I see. And by dark room, you mean the developing room. That's right. Have you quit the theater? I'm afraid the theater quit me. So I took a job posing for the McCormick Studio. I sort of worked myself in until now I'm chief cook and bottle washer. Oh, I see. Well, now that we've got all that cleared up, suppose you start at the beginning. Well, Mac, well, that is Mr. McCormick, has been having a rather tough time of it lately. As a matter of fact, Kirk Fenley, the photographer, and I didn't even get paid last week. And then came our big break. Yesterday, the Cottrell Silver Company said that they would give us a terrific deal if we could get Mrs. Isabel Fleming to endorse their product. You mean the Isabel Fleming? Yes. The wealthy society leader? Yes. How could you possibly hope to get a snooty old gal like that to pose for an advertisement? Well, her niece, Erica McCormick, is the boss's wife. Oh. Did you swing the deal? We took the photograph an hour ago. Everything went like clockwork. And it was after that that I went into the dark room. And then is when it happened. I thought at first I'd tell Mac, and then I decided I'd better get Barry's advice. So I sneaked away and came over here. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's for you. Hello? Yes. Well, what was wrong? Well, don't you know? Oh. Yes, I'll be there. Goodbye. What's the matter? We have to take the picture over again tonight. The negatives are missing. They can't find them anywhere. Isn't that a rather odd thing to happen? Oh, Jane, I'm scared. Don't you see? Someone's gotten rid of those negatives, so we'd have to take the picture over. So that we'd all have to come back there. Whoever it is wants another chance. Maybe tonight he won't bungle. It's chilly, isn't it? Oh, if Barry were only here. Who was that on the phone? Mac, uh, Mr. McCormick, the boss. But how did he know that you were here? I left word with Pop, the elevator man, to call me here if anyone wanted me. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I've got to get back. Listen, if I were you, I'd tell Mac immediately. What's the matter? Are you afraid that he might be the one who was... Of course not. I'll tell him. And you better tell the others, too. And as soon as Barry gets home, I'll rush him right over Thanks. There. only Inspector Clinton for the detectives and Mr. Craig for the detective fiction writers. Now we have the jackpot question. In a moment, the attendant will hold in front of you, gentlemen, ten objects. You will have only ten seconds to look at them and memorize as many as you can. They will then be taken away and you will have five seconds to name each article. All right, miss. Now, uh, Mr. Craig, if you step over here for this microphone, please, and Inspector, if you'll come up on my lap. All right, gentlemen, are you ready? All right, here we are. One second, two seconds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, take it away. All right, Mr. Craig, it's your first guess. A pair of handcuffs. One. A ring. Two. A revolver. Three. A, a cartridge clip. Four. A knife. Five. Uh, a silver dollar. Six. A flashlight. Seven. 
Uh, a watch. Splendid. That's eight. All right, Mr. Craig. Come on, Barry. Come on, Barry. A key. Excellent. And now, Inspector, the last one. Oh, I'm sorry, Inspector, but your time is up. As so often happens, Inspector, you overlooked the obvious. Now let him have four of my five seconds. That's a very sporting gesture. All right, Inspector, go ahead. Well, you're so smart. What is it? The great, big, beautiful tray that the other nine objects were resting upon. Correct! <laughs> and that's the guy that can't remember to mail a letter. And now for the final score for the losing detective team, 200 points. And for the winning Detective Fiction Writers Team, 210 points. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Tom Taylor Cigar Program is happy to present to the captain of the winning Detective Fiction Writers Team this beautiful 21 Jewel wristwatch. Oh, thank you. And to the less observant captain of the losing team, this Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Princess. Was the man at the light? Got the blink again? Jane. Hey, Jane. After eight o'clock, could she have left me? I haven't done anything wrong in days. Oh, wait a minute. When was it I squawked about the eggs? No, that wasn't the same. If she's upstairs playing gin Romeo again, oh, that... oh, Jane! Jane! Jane, darling. Oh, sweetheart. What's the matter? What happened? How did it happen? Did you fall? Are you hurt, sweetheart? So... Why, it's Mrs. Swanson. Thank heavens it's you, Mrs. Swanson. I thought sure it was my wife. Yeah, lie down. You'll be all right. Well, I'll get you some water. Easy does it now. You're all right. There you are. Oh, Mr. Craig. You're all right. What happened? Did you fall down? Oh, no, sir. He struck me. He did? Who did? Oh, I don't know. I never did get a good look at him. Is Mrs. Craig all right? Yes, of course. I mean, I don't know. I searched the apartment and I can't find her. Oh, I do hope nothing happened. You didn't say that again. What was this man doing? He was listening at the door and your wife was talking to another woman. I could just hear their voices. What time was this? Oh, let me see. I finished scrubbing the upper floor at 7 o'clock and I came down here to put away my mop and my bucket and look at the furnace. Always Mr. Weaver has me tend to the yes, furnace just uh, before I, I go to bed. Right. And... But what happened? Well, as I came down the back stairs, I saw this man. His back was to me. He was listening at your door, and I called out. I don't know why I did. I guess I thought I could frighten him. He turned to run down the hall. I made a grab for him, and he struck me. You didn't recognize the voice of the woman who was talking to my wife, did you? No, sir. Here, take a little drink of this. Listening to my wife. Now, why would anybody want to listen to my wife? I wonder what she's got herself mixed up in now. a nice bag in the bathroom, Miss Swanson. You better put some cold applications on that head. Help yourself to anything you want, Miss Swanson. Just uh, make yourself at home.
What's the matter, lady? Oh, I'm sorry. I... I... I, I what? Well, for a minute, I thought it was real. Well, that's just splendid. Too bad you're not the advertiser. I'm sorry. Hey, who told you to barge in like this anyway? Well, I was looking for Miss Julie Taylor. Well, she's in Studio 2 on the second floor. And close that door when you go out, will you? We've got work to do here. Excuse me. telephone you. What about? What's wrong? Nothing. Oh. Nothing's wrong. As a matter of fact, I, I was going to tell you not to bother to come over. Everything's going smoothly. We're all set to take the picture. Well, I don't understand. Didn't you tell Mac and the others what happened this afternoon? No. No, I didn't. Why not? Well, because I, I came to the conclusion that I, I was just imagining things. You mean you imagined someone tried to grab you? You who imagine you smell chloroform? Could have been someone who was playing a joke. Joke? Besides, this picture means everything to the boss. If it doesn't turn out, he's finished. He's through. If Mrs. Fleming and some of the models should find out, there's no telling what'll happen. They might walk out on her before he gets the picture, and then Mac would... Oh, I well, see. You're in love with Mac, aren't you? Mac is married. That doesn't answer my question. No. No, I'm not in love with him. Does that answer your question? Well, it's an answer. He's a grand guy, Jane. If you met him, you'd understand. Why don't you introduce me to him? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Of course I'll introduce you to him. I want you to meet all of them. Kirk can do it, too. I've told them all about you. Jane, you won't say anything. Oh, of course not. What about Barry? Oh, I left a note for him to come over here. But don't worry, I'll get to him first and explain everything. Huh? You're an angel. Well, thanks. Better open the door a little wider and let my wings through. Oh, excuse me. Well, that's all right. That's it. Hold it. Now move the candelabra a little more to the right. A little more. Just a little more. Hey, boys. Boys, I want you to meet Jane Craig. You've heard me speak of her, and here she is in person. Hey, she really is cute. Uh, this is Jane Craig, Mr. Fenley. This is Kirk. How do you do? This is Harry Dewar, the assistant genius. Kirk, look over hand. Oh. <laughs> How do you do? Yeah. Mac, I want you to meet my pal, Jane Craig. Oh. Well, Mac. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is Jane Craig, Mr. McCormick. Oh, Mr. McCormick and I have met before. Oh, really? You have? Oh, yes, I ran into him downstairs. He told me how to find you. Oh, oh yes, yes, I remember. Oh, I'm sorry if I was rude. <laughs> no, that's all right. I didn't have any business barging in like that. No, that's okay. Uh, everything set, boys? Yes, all set. Better round up the people, Julie. Yes, Mac. Look, if you'll stand right over here, you can see exactly how it's done. I'll only be a minute. Miss Lawrence. Coming. Whenever you're ready, Mrs. Fleming. I'll be right there. All right, folks, on the set, please. Okay. You owe me a dollar and a half. I know, I know. What time is it, anyway? Nine o'clock, right on the dot. Don't tell me this thing is going to come off on time. I hope so. I've got a date. All right, folks, take the same positions at the table you had this afternoon. Miss Lawrence, you sit here, please. Careful of the silverware, folks. It's all been counted. Joe. <laughs> Joke's over. How does it look, Kirk? Oh, terrific. Will you quit worrying? I'm not worrying. We're all set. Bring on Madam Queen. All right, I'll get her. Miss Ralston, when we get ready for the take, would you mind looking at the silver and not the camera? This picture's for Cottrell Silverware, not your Hollywood agent. Now, look, Mr. Fenley, if you don't like my work, you can get someone else. Now, now, Miss Ralston, he didn't mean any harm. Just kidding. Well, I don't like the way he kids. I was just coming for you. Good evening, Ralph. Good evening, Aunt Isabel. I hate dragging you out on a miserable night like this, but you see, I promised to deliver the photograph in the morning. Don't be absurd. I like rainy weather. Always did. My husband used to say I was a regular mudhead. 
You know, I can't imagine what happened to those negatives. Ralph. Yes, what is it? That woman in the far corner. She wasn't here this afternoon. Well, no, no, uh, we couldn't locate the model who posed this afternoon, so we had to engage a substitute. Well, I'm sorry, but she won't do. Won't do? Well, I don't understand. I mean, I will not be photographed with her. I don't like her. But Aunt Isabel... Let's not argue. Get someone else. I'll be in my dressing room. Folks, everybody go out and have a smoke. We're having a little technical trouble. Technical trouble? What are you talking about? I said technical trouble. Oh. Oh, uh, Miss Lawrence. <clears throat> The model who posed this afternoon has just arrived, and I, uh, I think she'll be a little more suitable, so I'm afraid we won't need you. I'll send you your check in the morning. Yes, Mr. McCormick. I understand perfectly. What's this all about? Mrs. Fleming objected to her. Why? She didn't say why. Well, what do you know? Julie, uh, you better get into something quick. You'll have to take a place. We haven't time to chase down another model. All right. Mind if I tag along, Julie? No, come on. Didn't she give you any reason at all, Mac? No. me. I must write Barry's uncle. Boy, whoever tore up these negatives certainly did a good job. Why would anyone do it? I don't know. How'd you happen to find them, Harry? Well, I uh, threw an envelope in the basket when I was working in here today, and I suddenly remembered that there was an address on it. So I uh, came in here to get it, and there you are. Where is the envelope? Why, uh, Right. It's right here. Well, wasn't it underneath the negatives? Underneath? Yeah. Why, no, I... I didn't pay particular attention. I uh, think it was to one side. Well, you've got a pretty tight story anyway, Harry. Wait a minute, Kirk. If you're insinuating that I tore those oh, negatives... Oh, Harry, nobody's accusing you of anything. Well, let him say he's not accusing me of anything. I'm sorry. I'm just a little jittery today. Things have been so upset. Oh, come on, boys. Let's get back to the set. Decidedly, assuming one is a duck. 
I'm looking for my wife. Rather unusual night to play hide and go seek, isn't it? No, I was going to meet my wife here at the McCormick Studios, but uh, this place seems to be practically deserted. Maybe she's on the second floor. That's where they're taking the pictures. If you're still looking for your wife. See, is this as fast as this thing will go? Yep, got it wide open. She don't go up like no rocket, but she don't fall down like one either. How long have you been running an elevator, Skipper? Well, now let me see. I got out of the Spanish-American War in 99. I was a bartender for 10 years, but had to give it up. My liver went back on me. Uh, let me see, that was 08, same year I lost my teeth. Yep, I remember it exactly because I got my plates in 1911. Uh, in 14, I got married. It didn't work for four years. Let me see now, uh, my wife left me in 18, so I went back to work. So I've been here 23 years, except in three weeks back uh, in 33 when, uh, when they repealed the 18th Amendment. So you tried bartending again, huh? Nope, celebrating. Now my gallbladder's no good. Let me see, uh, it makes 23 years minus three weeks. Uh, that's 22 years, 11 months and one week that I've been running this elevator. This has all been very interesting. Now, will you please open the door? See, this isn't the second floor. Nope, third. Second floor is the next one down. Want to go down to the second of floor? Of course, certainly. All right. Second floor it is. By the way, Skipper, you said you lost your teeth one year and you didn't get your plates till three years later. That's correct. What held you up so long? Well, no, that's a long story. Oh, for goodness sakes, we'll end up in the basement. No, nope, you'd end up back on the third floor. It takes a round trip to tell it. Are we here already? It does a little better downhill. Princess. Hello. Hello, Barry. I'll be with you in a minute. Would you please tell Mrs. Fleming her secretary's here to drive her home? Yes, certainly. What's it all about, Princess? Well, if you're through looking at the scenery, sit down and I'll tell you. Oh, oh Julie. Oh, Julie, what, 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 what do you suppose happened to her? She saw that. Shut the door, Jane. Inspector? Yes? I'm Ralph McCormick. Well, how do you do? Not so good. Uh, it happened on the second floor, and I thought it best to keep everyone up there. Mr. McCormick? Yes? Are you the party who telephoned the headquarters? That's right. Going up. Going up. The report said Mrs. Isabel Fleming. That's right. Say, old timer, can't we make a little more speed? Not unless you want to take the stairs. Well, that's an idea. Drop her down. This thing will shake your teeth out. Not mine. I keep them buttoned up here in my pocket. Step down, please. So I fell down. Well, you ride up with the old boy in the elevator and find out what he knows. Down the hall, Inspector. Sure. Step up, please. All right, let's go. Now, old time, I want to ask you a few questions. Fire away. 
What's your name? Uh, it, it Rudy Philpott. What's yours? Gatlin. Hey, I'm asking the questions. How long have you been working here? Well, let me see now. I was mustered out of the Spanish-American War in 1899. Got a job right off bartending. I hung on to it until the year after the panic in 1908. Uh, Samuel lost my teeth. And Look, all I want to know is how long you've been working here. Oh, now you got me off the track. Uh, let me see. Now, as I was saying, I got out of the Spanish-American War in 1899. Mr. Kenyon, did you by any chance see Miss Lawrence Lee? No, I didn't. Uh, you knew her personally, didn't you? Oh, slightly. What do you do, Mr. Kenyon? I'm a dancer in a nightclub. Where is this nightclub? Uh, just off Sheridan Square, the Club Cupid. Oh, sure, I know that place well. Uh, that is, I've walked by a good many times and saw the sign. Uh, it's a dump. But I won't be there always. Where do you live? Uh, 322 Bank Street. Well, that's the same building Mr. Snyder lives in. Yeah. We live in the same apartment. Yeah, that's right. Right this way, Inspector. Good evening, Inspector. Good evening. The body's in dressing room number two over here. Number two. Uh... What are you doing here? Oh, just moseying around, asking questions, taking notes. I've got them all written down. If you're interested, it might save repetition and time. And by the way, I'd like you to meet my wife, Inspector Clinton. How do you do, Inspector? You uh, made good time getting over here, uh, Inspector. It only took you 15 minutes. Why, Barry, isn't that a new watch? Yes, the Inspector made me a present of it. Oh, Inspector, how sweet. Do you mind telling me how you happen to be here? Well, I just happened to drop in to pick up my wife. I see, and she just happened to be here. Well, no, you see, I... Well, uh, yes, uh, you, you see, I, I happened to drop in to see a friend, Miss Taylor, who, who happens to work here. Oh. And then the murder happened. You don't happen to know who did it, do you? Unfortunately, no. Well, you've done a very thorough job here. Thank you. Oh, you don't mind if I take a look at the body, do you? Not at all. Go right ahead. Thanks. What have you found out, Doc? Juggler vein severed with a sharp instrument. Probably never knew what hit her. What'd you find, Temple? Only a handbag. The money and jewels are still in it. A pair of scissors. Could it have been the scissors? No. The wound is big enough to have been made by a bandit. Matthews? I hope I'm not in your way. Not at all. I can see right over your shoulder. Matthews, have a couple of men take a look around, see if they can find the weapon. There's a whole table full of knives out in the studio. You see, they were taking a picture advertising Cottrell Silver. You can read all about it there in my notes. Here, take your notes and go sit down someplace. Where's the studio? I'll show you. If you need me, just holler. It took me about 30 minutes to get here from the house. 15 minutes in the car and 15 minutes in the elevator. When I got here, naturally I asked for Mrs. Fleming. Miss Taylor went to find her and... Well, that's when they discovered it. What's your name? Roland X. Smith. Roland Smith. Please, X. X. The name is Roland X. Smith. What is the X for? To distinguish me from all the other Roland Smiths. Listen, baby, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay, shoot. Why'd you come over here in the first place? Well, Julie came to the apartment, see? After you, she expected something like this. What's that? I didn't quite catch you. Get over here on the other side of me. I can talk better over here. Don't act like a child, Barry. Come over here and I'll tell you all about it. Well, let me see now. I got out of the Spanish-American War in 99. I was a bartender for 10 years, but I had to give it up. My liver went back on me. Who sat here? No one sat there. You see, this end of the table wasn't in the picture. Oh. Mrs. Fleming sat at the head. Who sat here on Mrs. Fleming's right? Miss Lawrence sat there originally. I see. She's the woman that Mrs. Fleming objected to. That's right. Who took her place? Miss Taylor, my assistant. Look at that table. Isn't there a piece of cutlery missing? Yes, the carving knife's gone. Within the easy reach of anyone who was seated there. 
Oh, yes, but anyone might have picked it up. Let me see that negative again. This picture was taken while Miss Taylor was seated here, wasn't it? Yes. But Miss Taylor's my... Oh, it's absurd to think that there she... There was no picture taken while Miss Lawrence was here, was there? No. Have another look. Well, the knife's missing from the picture. Therefore, Miss Lawrence could have been here when the knife disappeared. Yes, I suppose she could have. What do you know about this Lawrence woman, Mr. McCormick? Well, practically nothing. We've used her on several occasions. She always seemed to be a rather mild, quiet, good-natured woman. You have her address? Yes. And I suppose you have some photographs? Yes, I think we have a model's directory in the reception room. Ah. Well, let's take a look. Hmm. Julie, will you help us out, please? Get the models directly. Yes. How did you prevail upon so prominent a person as Mrs. Fleming to pose for you, Mr. McCormick? She was my wife's aunt. Oh, oh uh, I may as well tell you that my wife is the sole heir to the Fleming fortune. Well, that doesn't necessarily place you under suspicion. You seem to have an up-and-coming business here, haven't you? I'm on the verge of bankruptcy. As a matter of fact, I probably will go broke now. You see, uh, Mrs. Fleming's death is really a terrible blow to me. How's that? Well, I was very fond of her. She was very fond of me. In fact, she was planning to help me out in my troubles. We had a long chat when she first arrived tonight. And she promised to lend me $30,000 to carry on my business. Indeed? Well, yes, that's true. I know it's true. Mr. McCormick would be very stupid to try to do away with the one person who could save him, wouldn't he? Did you hear Mrs. Fleming promise to lend him the money? Well, not exactly. You see, I... I told her. Now I get it. Get what? Why, Julie changed her attitude. You said that after begging you to have us come over here, she treated you like a stepchild when you arrived. Yeah? Well, don't you see? Julie was afraid that it was Mac who was going to commit the murder. That's the new stuff they're using instead of nylon. Is that so? Then when she found out that Mrs. Rich Witch was going to lend him the money, she figured the necessity for killing her was gone. So she wanted us to forget about the whole thing. I think you've got something there. You know, that stuff looks nice. Mrs. McCormick. Erica. Erica, if there's anything I can do. My deepest sympathy. Hello, dear. I, I tried to get you at the apartment. I was out to dinner. Uh, I want you to meet Inspector Clinton. Inspector, this is my wife. Mrs. McCormick, I'm sorry to meet you under such unhappy circumstances. Won't you take a seat? I'd like to ask you a few questions when I can get to you. Here it is, Inspector. Madge Lawrence. Height, five feet nine, 130 pounds, eyes brown, hair grayish. You have Miss Lawrence's address? Yes, I have it downstairs in my files. Would you mind giving it to Lieutenant Temple? Not at all. Better take a couple of men with you. All right, Inspector. The 1911 to 13, I went back to my old job as bartender. Had to quit. Live her again. Mrs. McCormick, when was the last time you saw your aunt? I had lunch with her yesterday. Did she give any indication at that time that she feared for her life? She never has at any time expressed fear for her life. What's the matter? A big problem. I said, what's the matter? Nothing, sir. Oh, I suppose that was just your tonsils backfiring, huh? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. If you're asking my opinion, which you're not, I think he got a little shock from this picture. Do you know Miss Lawrence? Miss Lawrence? No, sir. Do you know this lady in the picture? No, sir. Well, then what startled you? I don't know. I'm, I'm a bundle of nerves. The whole thing's silly. I'm just imagining things, that's all. Imagining what? What's silly? I thought I recognized the woman in the picture, but it couldn't be. I haven't seen her for ten years. This woman looks much younger than she should look after ten years. Who? Mrs. Fleming, of course. Mrs. Fleming? Well, if that's Mrs. Fleming, who's that in there? The second Mrs. Fleming. And that's the first Mrs. Fleming, isn't it? Yes. Then you did recognize her. Yes. I... 
I don't know. Oh, of course you do. A person doesn't change much in ten years. Why, I bet you haven't yourself. Well, my hair is a little thinner. Oh, nonsense. I bet you didn't have any more hair when you worked for the first Mrs. Fleming than you have right now. Really, now, I never worked for the first Mrs. Fleming. But you did know her, didn't you? Only by sight. I saw her a few times at the trial. The trial? What trial? Now, wait a minute. I hate to interrupt something that seems to be a private conversation. Listen, Inspector, if you just give me a couple more minutes, I'll clear this whole thing up for you. Quiet! Inspector, we're only trying to help you out. I realize that, and I'm trying to help you out. Matthews, open that door. You mean... That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. We're only trying to be of assistance. This thing was just beginning to simplify itself nicely. Inspector, you're nothing but a silly, self-centered, grumpy old... Oh, you spoke about a trial. What trial was that? Inspector, Roland has been a loyal employee of my aunt for many years, and he's obviously reluctant to drag out the family skeleton. Perhaps I can tell you what you want to know. Good. Is that the first Mrs. Fleming? I wouldn't know. It happened when I was so young, and most of it was kept from me for many years. However, being curious, I finally got to the bottom of it all. My uncle divorced the first Mrs. Fleming 15 years ago. A few months afterwards, he married Aunt Isabel. Later, he died and left his entire estate to Aunt Isabel, with the exception of $500,000, which he left to the first Mrs. Fleming. The trial which Roland spoke of was about the will. My Aunt Isabel resented my uncle's first wife so deeply that... She declared my uncle insane in order to break the will. Are you through questioning me already? Already? Until I learn the right with my left hand, I am. Hey, you. Hey, wait a minute. Well, if it isn't Machine Gun Gatling, uh, Lieutenant Gatling, my wife. How do you do? What are you doing around here? Nothing, Lieutenant. We're just going home. Yeah, well, maybe you are, and maybe you ain't. Does the inspector know you're around? Huh? Why, yes. Of course, certainly. Uh, we just left him. He told us to go on home. Oh, he did, huh? How long have you been around here? Well, since before the murder, but... And the inspector told you to go home. Well, before you go, he'll tell me he told you to go home. Oh, he'll tell you all Come right. on, we're going upstairs. The inspector won't like you bringing us back. Don't tell me what he don't like. I've been with him too long. You can stop the whispering, too. Oh, sorry. Uh, how long have you been running this elevator, Pop? Well, let me see now. I got out of the Spanish-American War in... Oh, no, you don't. We'll walk. Spanish-American War. Come on. Step down, please. Hey, Chief, look who I found trying to sneak out of the building. Surprised, ain't you? Well, there ain't anybody sneaking out on you while I'm around, boss. But now I'm hearing bells ringing. McCormick Studios. Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Inspector Clinton. Hmm? Hello. Hello? Yes, Temple. Dead. Are you sure? Are you sure, Joe? She's either dead or my watch stop. Positively. It looks like she took an overdose of sleeping tablets. Yes, sir. The place is right around the corner. You can get here in five minutes. Hey, Charlie, look. Hold on a second, Inspector. I think Henderson's found something. Yes, sir. We found that missing knife. Good work, boys. I'll be right over. Madge Lawrence, the first Mrs. Fleming, murdered Isabel Fleming and then committed suicide. All right. Thank you all for your cooperation. You can all go home now. Why do you say? Boy, what a nice ah! what, is it? what is it? What now? What's the matter? I left the pot roast in the oven. There they go. Come on. The case is closed. 
want to go looking for chloroform cans at this time of the morning. Because usually the druggist's name is on the label. I want to find out who bought that can. Get to me again. Slippery. <laughs> Up. You stay there, princess, where it's safe. You stinker. Stop to ask. What'd you scream about? I saw a ghost. Oh, nonsense. There's no such thing as a ghost. That's what I thought until a minute ago. Something. I got out of the Spanish American War in 1899. That's only poor old Pop probably thought we were thieves. Got a job bartender. The police? Yeah, I called them. We better get out of here before we're arrested for breaking and entering.
Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Jane, I'll be back in a little while. I'm going down to police headquarters. Hey, wait a minute! I can't wait. I gotta get down there right away. What's the idea? You're not gonna go down there without me. I wanna go too. Now, Princess, what do you wanna do? Stop traffic? Oh, now, Jane, you know you can't go out in the cold right after a hot shower. I won't be gone long. All I want to do is... Gee, you smell good. So soft and warm. Hey, what am I doing? I have to hurry. I have to. Do you, darling? It's murder. <laughs> Maybe that'll change your mind. I found that in the back hallway, just outside the door of my apartment. The man who was listening to Miss Taylor and my wife probably dropped it in a scuffle with the housekeeper. So what? So that proves the eavesdropper was from the McCormick studio. How? Well, good heavens, man, it's got prop room marked right there on it. Obviously, it's the key to the prop room of the McCormick Studios. Does it say McCormick Studios on the tag? No. Oh, there are hundreds of property rooms, Mr. Craig. Every theater has a property room. Every furniture store has a property room. Prop room is quite a common term. But it all ties up. Madge Lawrence, or the first Mrs. Fleming, as you call her, wasn't engaged till evening. Someone tried to chloroform Julie Taylor in the afternoon, and that same someone followed her to our apartment when she came to call on my wife. Furthermore, it was a man, not a woman. Mrs. Swanson caught a glimpse of him before he knocked her down. Oh, then the first Mrs. Fleming couldn't have murdered the second Mrs. Fleming, huh? That's right. Well, then how do you account for the knife that killed the second Mrs. Fleming being found in the first Mrs. Fleming's apartment? Planted. Oh, planted. That's ridiculous. Nobody left the McCormick Studios. And yet you say somebody planted that knife in the Lawrence woman's apartment. I've got it. Whoever killed Isabel Fleming planted the knife in the first Mrs. Fleming's suitcase before she left the studio. Probably she never even knew she had it. How did the murderer get her to take an overdose of sleeping tablets? Coax her over the telephone? Maybe the overdose was an accident. You yourself said you found out she was in the habit of taking sleeping tablets. Yes, and I found out she had a motive. And I found out she had the knife. And I found out that everybody else has an alibi. And I'm beginning to find out that you're getting to be quite a pest. So if you pardon me, I have some work to do. Then you won't reopen the case. Not on the strength of the puny evidence you brought up. All right, Inspector. But I'm going to find out who killed Isabel Fleming, and I'll bet you five to two it wasn't Madge Lawrence. And when you find out, Mr. Craig, will you let us know so we can arrest them, please? Will you answer me just one question? We aim to please. Did you check to see if the Lawrence woman's fingerprints were on that knife? Okay. Imagine I cluck. Of course you checked to see if the Lawrence Dame's fingerprints were on the knife. Didn't you, Chief? Sure, I know you did. And her fingerprints were not on the knife. Huh? Hello, Lewis. Hi, Craig. Hey, Mr. Craig, wait a minute, wait a minute. Barry! How about a story Barry. of the Fleming case? Stand aside, Bobby, let me get this picture. Have you got any theories, Barry? Why, yes, of course, quite a few. Well, go ahead, let's hear them. Well, it's my opinion that the death of the first Mrs. Fleming had nothing to do with the murder of the second. What do you mean? I mean, I believe the murderer of Isabel Fleming is still at large. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Son, give him the money, dear. My name's headline in every newspaper in the city. Princess, you're married to a very famous man. Yes, and so modest. I can afford to be. I wouldn't be at all surprised to find the newsreel cameraman waiting inside to take pictures of me. Sorry, I think the lock's been tampered with. Oh, don't be silly. Uh Go. Oh, oh, oh. What? 
What's this all about? Who are these guys? I don't think they're the new Cyril Cameron. Here, let me help you up. Now look, fathead. You've been running off the mouth all day about what you think and what you suspect, you know? If you want to stay healthy, you better keep your mouth shut and mind your own business, you know? Don't get any more ideas about the Fleming case, or you'll wind up in the headlines again, and the next time you won't be able to read them, you know? Whoever hired you must Whoever have... hired me told me to give you this. Ah! Oh, 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 darling! Oh, oh. When he wakes up, you better remind him what's good for him, you know? Confused. He pulled his Sunday punch on me. He'd never gotten away with it if he hadn't pulled his Sunday punch. You know what this proves, don't you? That Madge Lawrence's suicide had nothing to do with Isabel Fleming's death. Right. Her death just happened to work in favor of the real killer. You know, my theory was that Madge Lawrence took an overdose of sleeping tablets, you know? Maybe accidentally, maybe on purpose. But her only part in the case was that the murderer planted the knife in her bag knowing that her true identity would come out and she'd be blamed. But, darling, I know all that. You've bent my ear all day telling me. Well, can't you see it's true? That's why the killer hired those hoodlums to scare me off. I'm getting hot on the trail, you know? Yeah, and if you don't watch out, you'll cool off in the morgue. Not me. I know how to take care of myself. Oh, sure you do. I bet you broke that hoodlum's fist with your jaw. Oh, so a guy gets knocked down and you lose all your confidence in him. Oh, no, Barry, I didn't mean it that way. I have all the confidence in the world in you. That's why I don't want you to go on with this thing. You'll get closer and closer. And the first thing you know, you'll get killed. This is dangerous business, Barry. Drop it. Are you suggesting that I behave like a coward? I'm just suggesting that you behave. Listen, Princess, someday we hope to have a child, and I don't want that child to grow up to point the finger of shame at its father. Then we'll teach him not to point. It's no use trying to kid me out of it, Jane. It's my duty to get to the bottom of this. You get to the bottom, all right, of the East River. Look, honey, I'm just going over to the McCormick Studios and have a look around. I want you to stay here. Don't be silly. After all, if I'm going to end up a widow, I have a right to see how it's done. Who do you suppose that is? I don't know, but this time they're not going to pull a Sunday on me. Whoever it is is going to have to fight fair and square. Oh, oh good evening, Mr. Smith. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Do sit down, Mr. Smith. Uh, would you uh, care for a little sherry? Oh, thank you. No, I believe not. Sure? Oh, well, on second thoughts, I think I will. I need something to quiet my nerves. Let me take your hand. Oh, I feel just like I've been run through a ringer. Uh, what's bothering you? Your theory in the papers. Thank you. Ever since I read it, I've been on needles and pins. I just didn't know what to do. First, I thought I should come and have a talk with you. Then I thought I shouldn't come and have a talk with you. Then I said yes to myself. Then I said no to myself. I'm all worn out from the argument. I know exactly how you feel. <sighs> Thank you. Well, now that you're here, old man, what's on your mind? Lee Kenyon. Lee Kenyon? Oh, yes, darling. He's the model that works in that nightclub where you read the sign walking by. Oh, yes. Uh, what about him, Mr. Smith? Just this. Two days before Mrs. Fleming was... before she passed away, this Kenyan person came to the house. I don't know whether it was by appointment or not. But just before he arrived, Mrs. Fleming sent me to the bank and had me draw $10,000 in cash. <whistles> well, I thought it was extraordinary, too. But that's not all. This morning, I was going through Mrs. Fleming's effects, and the $10,000 is gone. I'd better run down to that nightclub and have a talk with Kenyon. Well, my car's outside. I'd be very glad to run you over. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Mr. Smith. You only have a small coupe, haven't you, Mr. Smith? Oh, no, I have a large sedan. <sighs> mm. That's what I said. Good evening, Mr. Craig. Good evening, Mr. Craig. Good evening, Mr. Craig. This way, Mr. Craig. So you just walked by the place, huh? They probably saw my picture in the paper. I told you not to take that last drink. <laughs> Come in. Friend to see you, Mr. Canyon. 
Oh, Mr. Craig, come in. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, doesn't this left shoulder look a little too padded? Not at all. Beautiful suit. New? Yes. Oh, Mr. Craig, I've been reading about you in the paper today. Oh? What can I do for you? Do for me? Yeah. I'm not egotistical enough to think you came down here just to see me dance. Oh. So whatever questions you want to ask me, go ahead. Uh, I'll try to answer them if I can. All right. Uh, who's your tailor? Max Marsh. Oh, forgive me for even asking that question. He charges about $200 for a suit of clothes, doesn't he? Yes. Yes, he's rather high, but uh, a man has to wear well-tailored clothes when he's before the public. Of course. Besides, what's $200 to a man who has $10,000? $10,000? Ten me? $10,000? Why, uh, where would a guy like me get $10,000? From the late Mrs. Isabel Fleming? Look, Mr. Craig, you can't get me mixed up in this thing. I don't know anything about it. I swear I don't. I admit I got $10,000 from the old lady, but I didn't have anything to do with knocking her off. Maybe, maybe not. But you're not going to tell me she gave you all that money just because she liked you. No. No, of course not. She gave me the money to stay away from Erica. From Mrs. McCormick? Yeah. You see, Erica told her that she was going to divorce Mac and marry somebody else. The old lady thought it was me. So she called me up there and offered me ten grand to stay away from Erica. Naturally, I took the money. Well, I thought it was a good joke on the old lady. Especially since I hadn't seen Erica in over a year. You mean you weren't the man Erica was in love with? Certainly not. Eric and I used to be good friends, but that's all it amounted to. Where'd you meet her? Through Mac? Oh, I knew her before Mac did. Harry Durer introduced us. As a matter of fact, Durer introduced Mac to her. She and Durer were kids together. All you came down here for? Just to have a good time? What else? Where's your boyfriend? I was just wondering about that myself. Uh, must have wandered away somewhere, I guess. Oh, but, but he'll come back. He always does. That's swell. We'll hang around having a little chat with him. You know? Oh, you, you don't have to. He's made up his mind to keep his nose out of the whole thing. Good. We'll wait and congratulate him on using his brain. Oh. All right. Suit yourself. Um, mind if I leave you for a minute to powder my nose? Wait a minute. You don't want to get this coat all covered with powder, you know? Leave it here. It'll be here when you get back. Uh, very well. Um, but keep a good eye on it. I just got it. Barry. What is it? Harry, those two hoodlums, they're waiting out in front for you. Kenyon, is there any way out of here without going back through the cafe? There's a fire door in the chorus room. But the girls are making a change. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Blindfold yourself, dear. I'll see if it's all right. Oh, girls. Come in. Listen, girls, I'd like to bring a gentleman through here. A oh, man, man oh, oh, here. Oh, but it's a matter of life and death, and besides, he'll be blindfolded. Okay, bring him through. Thanks for everything, girls. Oh, well, it's Mr. Craig. Oh, Hello, Mr. Craig. They must know me from my books. Don't tell me they can read, too. Philip, here's the money for our drinks. Oh, thank you, sir. 
Look. Next time, they'll know better. You know? What'd you find out from Kenyon? I'll tell you on the way over to Julie's. Hey, taxi! What'd you find out from Julie? Hey, taxi! Well, you said you thought she was in love with Mac, didn't you? Yes. Well, when a dame's in love with a guy, it's only natural for her to know who the guy's wife's in love with. Hey, taxi! I'd like to see Miss Julie Taylor, please. Just tell her Mr. and Mrs. Craig. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Taylor. Checked out about 15 minutes ago. Checked out? At this time of night, where'd she go? I don't know, sir. She didn't leave a forwarding address. That's strange. Yes, isn't it? After being here for two years. I asked her about her mail, and she didn't answer me at all. She just rushed right on by. Well, thanks very much. If that could have been... No. No? No. Hey, maybe it was... No. No? No. Oh. What time is it? It's ten after twelve. Hello? Oh, yes, he's here. Who's calling? This is Erica McCormick. Oh, ju just a minute. It's Erica McCormick. Hello? Mr. Craig? Mr. Craig, you've got to help me. I just found out something. I know who killed... Hello? Hello? Cut off. Now what? I'm going over there and have a talk with her. Maybe she'll ring again. Why don't you call her back? I've got a hunch there's something happening over there. Well, whatever it is, I hope it happens before we get there. Hey, Cully, give us a little line on this, will you, pal? It was a McCormick dame, wasn't it? When's Inspector Clinton going to talk to us? When the inspector wants to talk to you guys, he'll talk to you guys. Well, how about talking to Henderson or Gatling, then? Nobody gets inside, do you understand? Did you tell the boys to come up? Sure did, Doc. <clears throat> what did you find out, Doc? Well, she was strangled, all right. We may find out more with an autopsy, but I doubt it. Do you feel like answering a few more questions, Mr. McCormick? Well, if I didn't, I'd have to answer them anyway, wouldn't I? No, not necessarily. Still, it might help. Go ahead. How long were you here before you telephoned to headquarters? I told you before, I just arrived. I went into the bedroom and found... found her, and I called you immediately. You were out all evening? Yeah, I was at the studio working on the books. Mm. I suppose you can supply witnesses to corroborate your statement? No, I'm afraid not. Unless the elevator man happened to see me? No, unfortunately for you, he didn't. We've already checked with him. All right, all right. If you think I did it, why don't you arrest me and have it over with? Well, you seem to be more concerned with your own predicament than you do with your wife's death. You were on friendly terms, I suppose. Well... Oh, I may as well tell you. You'll find it out anyway. This afternoon, my wife told me that... she was going to divorce me. Well, Mr. McCormick, I'm afraid we'll have to hold you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Don't forget the paper, dear. I'm glad you don't deliver the milk. Bill. Bill. Hey, there's one here that isn't a bill. Good. Good. Barry, it's a letter from Julie. Well, what's so exciting about Julie? Dear Jane, I suppose it's cowardly for me to run away, but I can't bear to hang around and see the grandest person I've ever known suffer. Yes, you guessed it from the start. I love Mac McCormick, but he doesn't know I'm alive. However, I'd like to help him if I could. That's why I'm writing you, Jane. He's in so much trouble in the reopening of this 
case will just make it more difficult for him, so won't you please ask Barry to let the matter drop? I'm sure the police had the proper solution to Mrs. Fleming's death. There's no need to ask questions. They'll only bring out a lot of gossip and unpleasantness. Please, Jane, devotedly, Julie. P.S. I just called Mac at the studio. If only you could have heard his voice so tired and unhappy. Oh, poor kid. New York Central Stationery. Evidently, she wrote the letter at the railroad station. Yeah. Let me see the envelope. Yeah. I picked up at 1 a.m. She obviously thinks Mac did it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Running away to keep from being questioned. She probably doesn't even know about Erica's death. Barry, Mac was at the studio. She phoned him there. I wonder what time. Where's my hat? Here we go again. Show him the letter. When did you get this? This morning. Why didn't you tell the police Julie called you on the phone? That would have proved you were at the studio. Well, I dragged her into this. What time did she call? Hmm? What time did she call? Well, about a quarter past twelve. That's when Erica phoned you. And she was killed right then to keep her from talking. Well, that proves you didn't do it. Erica called you. What are you talking Listen, about? Listen, we haven't time to answer a lot of questions. We only have time to ask one. Will you answer it? If I can. Who engaged Madge Lawrence to pose for the picture? Well, I don't know, but Julie'd know. And we don't know where Julie is. Well, unless we find Julie. Hey, I've got it. Come on, Princess. Uh, you wait right here till we get back. Don't worry, I will. Baby, you used to be an actress. Do you think you could sound like Julie over the telephone? Why, I don't know. Well, make up your mind, yes or no? Well, maybe. Good, come on. Oh, Barry, whatever you're figuring on doing, I don't like it. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Craig. Just what do you want around here? I was just wondering if you'd seen Julie. No. She checked out of her apartment last night. You knew that. Yes, but how'd you know? We called her apartment house this morning. The clerk said you'd been around looking for her last night. Or rather, he said a nosy guy with a good-looking woman. That sounded like you. Did you find her? No, but my uh, wife received a letter from her this morning. I have it right here. Uh... Oh, what did I do with that letter? I must have lost it. Yeah, I bet you did. Well, there's the envelope. You can see it was mailed last night. Hey, what do you want around here, Craig? What are you after? Oh, I was just trying to find out who killed Isabel Fleming and Erica McCormick. I think Julie can tell me. All right, so why don't you go and find her and ask her? Oh, I know where she is, or rather I will know in a few minutes. She's going to telephone me here at uh, 10 o'clock. You see, gentlemen, there are only four people who could possibly be guilty. Mac, Kenyon, you, and you. Whoever it was planned Isabel Fleming's murder beautifully. The object of the murder was to get the Fleming fortune into the hands of Erica McCormick. According to that reasoning, it was Mac. He's the only one who would profit by it. Mac was terribly hard up, I know, but uh, I don't believe he did it. No, Mac wouldn't have profited by it. You see, Erica had already applied for a divorce. I didn't know that. Oh, didn't you? Well, Erica was in love with another man. That man wanted her to get the Fleming fortune before he married her. And that man is the murderer. Somehow Erica found out that he was the murderer, so he had to kill her too. Now, let's take Kenyon. Whoever killed Isabel Fleming hired Madge Lawrence, knowing that the story of the family feud would come out and she'd be blamed. Kenyon, who was only another model, couldn't possibly have hired Madge. That leaves just you two. Jabber, jabber, jabber. When uh, Julie telephones, she'll tell me which of you employed Madge. That's all I have to know. Why don't you go away? How do you account for Lawrence's death? Oh, an accident. She was nervous over the scene she had with Isabel Fleming, took an overdose of sleeping tablets. But the knife? It was planted in her bag before she left the studio. Very interesting. Yeah, it sounds like another one of your corny books. Hmm. Uh, 
Hello? Who? This is Julie. Who is this? Oh, this is Kirk. Oh, Kirk. Is Barry Craig there? Yes, he's right here. Hello? Oh, Julie? Uh, Julie, I want you to answer me just one question. Now, think hard. Who was it that engaged Madge Lawrence? Who? Who? Is that really Julie? No, it's Craig's wife. All right, boys, you win. It's no use, didn't work. Okay, goodbye. Well, I tried. Oh, and a good try it was, too. But I warn you about one thing. Julie will show up the minute she finds out that Mac's in jail. Hello? Long distance? Yes, yes, I'll take the call. Hello? Julie! Well, where are you? Yeah. Yeah, Mac's in jail. Yeah, it looks pretty black for him. Well, sure, we're, we're doing all we can Give for him. Give me that to... phone. Julie, this is Barry Craig. We can help Mac if you'll tell me just one thing. Who was it that made the phone call that engaged Madge Lawrence to pose? All right, Craig. You can put that phone down. And keep your hands in the air. Now, turn around, both of you. If it hadn't been for your meddling, Craig, I'd have gotten away with this. So I owe you something, and now I'm going to pay you back. If you've got any prayers to say, you'd better make it quick. Now, now listen, Keep Clark. out of this, Harry. This guy's been begging for a killing since he first walked into this place. And now he's going to get it. All right, are you ready, Hawkshaw? <laughs> He's all right. He just fainted. Good work, boys. Ah, it was nothing. Will you help me get him on the bed? Oh, Barry! Barry! There's your husband, Mrs. Oh. Craig. He just fainted. Oh, darling, wake up. What's happened to you? Are you hurt? Oh, darling. Bert, I'm dead. But if this is heaven, how did that guy get in here? It's lucky for you we happened along. Happened along? I knew you were following me. What detained you? Dear, did I sound like Julie on the telephone? No, he recognized your voice immediately. But then I got the first break I've had since I've been on this case. Just after you telephoned, Julie herself called. But that wasn't Julie. That was me, too. You? Yes, I called the second time, and, and Dura answered the phone, so I pretended I was long distance, and then that I was Julie. Oh, Princess, you're wonderful. Congratulations, <clears throat> Mrs. Craig. Oh, thank you, Inspector. Oh, darling, do you feel strong enough to go home now? Oh, sure. Steady as a rock. Well, Inspector, if you ever get in any trouble again, let me hear from you. We got Craig! Oh! Oh, dear. 